Telephone communication. What we take for granted today as simple was at one time quite difficult. In the 50s and early 60s, making an international call was expensive and required a reservation. Many countries couldn't be reached at all. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched its Sputnik 1 satellite, igniting the space race. It was a feat few could ignore, including Harold Rosen, a young engineer at Boeing Heritage Company Hughes Aircraft. Rosen's idea was for a satellite to remain stationary in orbit, with fixed antennas pointed toward Earth, spinning much like a perfectly thrown football. He explains in this Boeing Archives interview. Thus, the spin could be used to aim a pancake antenna pattern at the Earth. Rosen and his team of engineers demonstrated the satellite prototype from the Eiffel Tower at the 1961 Paris Air Show. Skeptics thought it would never go any higher. We went to a lot of government agencies and a lot of communications companies, and uh, we got turned down by a lot of people. <laughs> Eventually, the idea gained support, and SYNCOM 2 launched in 1963. The 78-pound device became the first geostationary communication satellite and the first satellite to transmit a two-way international phone call, a call between President John F. Kennedy and the Prime Minister of Nigeria. It was a call that brought the world closer together. Well, that was a wonderful feeling. We knew we'd reached new ground, and uh, this was going to mean remarkable things for communications. SYNCOM, the little satellite that ushered in big changes in the way we communicate and connect with the world.